How are we going, folks? Just cleaning up the garden a little bit, still wearing the same woolly clothes because it's bloody cold. And I'm thinking, if I'm cold, what's the soil doing? You know, it's warm above, then it gets cold, then it warms up and gets really cold. Nighttime temperature last night and the night before, just below five degrees it was. At the moment, I reckon it's sitting around 14 or 13. It would have been much higher than that if it is. But what's your soil temperature doing? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the life in the soil too. I mean, that's where it all stems from. It's all soluble minerals in the ground and they're created by the fungi or the, or the microbes, <clears throat> which then feed the plants. So when you're using insoluble fertilizers like our black grit, plants can't digest that. That gets digested by the microbes in the soil and the phosphate kicks into gear. And all of a sudden these plants just blow out of control with the silicate and the calcium. But we still need warm temperatures and above and below ground. So yesterday I was talking about the eggplants and the grafted and I spotted this little compost thermometer that was in there. So I've just taken it out and I'm about to test the soil in here. And what we're looking at here is a kale plant that I've just cut back. You can see it's already re-sprouting. I was just started cleaning off the old leaves because they were old and past their use by date. And that means the little critters will come in and clean up the garden for you. They're called the garbage garbologists or garbage collectors basically. So whatever we don't consume properly, and the plant starts to decay, they'll come in and chew it up. So they won't touch the new leaves because the energy in those and the minerals in those are so high, the insects and the, and the composting creatures really can't digest them. So the richer your plants are, the healthier they are. Here we are, look at this. The culprits are sitting here lying down on his back. I think he's OD, food coma. There he is. He's on his last legs or she, whatever. That goes out into the woods. And this here is a silver beet plant that's gone completely nuts. So for these sort of plants, parsley, alyssum we have in here and some lobelia, they're good for the cooler um, temperatures and even the soil. But let's see where the soil really sits in this bed here at the moment. So I've just stuck in the thermometer. I'll just let it sit in here for a little bit. So I've gone in, I'll quickly start again. They're about 40 centimetres long in length. Sorry to jump around like that, but that's the length of them. So the idea of these is so you can test the temperature in your compost because compost needs to be at least 55 degrees before it actually starts to decompose probably or activate. Whereas in the beds, well, we don't want it at 55 because we'll cook the plants. We want it to be around 18, 20 degrees for the spring summer vegetables comfortably. Now where it is is over here, that's Fahrenheit. So if you want to do your conversion, we're about 40, 50, that's 58 degrees Fahrenheit. And I think that converts to about 14 degrees or maybe just below that in Celsius. So the soil temperature in this particular bed, which is pretty active, is around 14 degrees. A little bit low for tomatoes. Well, you want it over 10 degrees, but preferably around 18, sweet spot. Let's go and check another one. This is a bed we resurrected from the dead. If you remember, it was infested with tree roots, invasive roots. Now we've got our chicory, it's taken off. That one snuck up in there. I don't know how that got in there. Is that a parsley? No, that looks like coriander. No, it's parsley. I should taste it, not smell it. No, oh, it's coriander. Tomato, beetroot. Now remember, this, this bed here, nothing would grow in it. Absolutely nothing. And if you want to learn how to resurrect your bed from scratch, watch it on our previous videos. I will put a link in the description here so you can see how we brought this bed back to life. I think it was two parts to it, but we'll just show you some basic clips of it, or one of them at least, and you can follow the rest. Have a look at the beetroot in there. Not bad, huh? Very late planting too. Parsley's taken off. Coriander, as we know, it likes to bolt, but it hasn't really bolted too hard. Just a little flower there just to say, hey, careful, don't feed me anymore. Well, that's what coriander does. It, when the, the temperature spikes up and down and you've got different moisture levels going throughout the whole week, season, month, and you get, you know, five days of cool weather, then you get a 25 degree heat, what's that going to do to your plants? It's just going to cause them to do this. They'll bolt, they'll freak out. And if they're left a little bit dry, they're not going to be happy. But this garden bed's doing pretty well. Tomato plant hasn't grown much, but it's healthy as. Have a look at it. You can see that's actually weathered in well. That's, that's been acclimatised. It's been hardened off, folks. It's doing really well and it's sort of well protected. So it's not as hardened off as the other one out in the open. But by comparison to the bed earlier, that's got a little bit of um, protection there from the residing beds. This one's getting more open sun, especially in the afternoon. So let's put it in there and see where it sits. So it should be at least a couple of degrees warmer. Well, I reckon. And we are, we're on 60, just a little bit, it's creeping up slowly. 
you can see that. So we're at, would you say 14 degrees? Probably 14 degrees or 15, sorry, 15 degrees. Probably closer to 16 because the ratio and the conversion is not exactly the same. So when it goes from Fahrenheit to um, Celsius. So 60, just over 60 degrees. Is that what it is, 60? Fahrenheit. Degrees Fahrenheit, yeah. There we go, make sure it's not, you know, 60 degrees Celsius. So a little bit warmer. We'll test one more bed. Let's check this bed out here with a tomato that's really grown well. Super clean, little bit cupping on the end, but I'm telling you, there's nothing to do with the soil, everything to do with the weather above ground. I need to tie this up so it stops wiggling around. So I'm gonna test the temperature just near the root ball here. See what this is reading for this plant to grow. Yep, they're all sitting about the same time, same temperature. So we are sitting at 11, 12, 13, 14 degrees, 14, 15 degrees. So it seems to be okay for these tomatoes, but they're not really jumping leaps and bounds, are they? So a little bit more warm weather or constant weather, we should be happy. But then again, you know what? I have bugger all time to be in the garden. You know that. I'm always running around like a, you know, blue ass fly. And uh, if I had the plants jumping out of the ground too quickly, they'd be out of control and I'd have lose, I would have lost control. So I'm sort of quietly grateful that the weather's still a bit cool. Gives me a chance to finish a few things and tasks, but this one will need to be tied up now. And the other part I want to show you is look at the flowers. Nice and strong, really strong flowers, folks. Good bunches of flowers. What variety, is that what you're asking? Indigo apple, that's from Sarah's. We saw that the other day when I went past there, she's still got 50, 60 varieties growing there and they're all probably a little bit smaller than this in pots. So if you're looking to get some more tomatoes in your garden, she's got plenty out there, as does Mary Anthony in uh, Dandenong Outlet, as is Steve. I notice he's got a few tomatoes growing too, and Daverin Park. So if you're in South Australia, pop in to see Dom and Phil. They've got plenty of little seedlings going on there and they're all growing in our mix. So if you're using our mix, no doubt once you put them in the ground, um, they'll be quite adapted to it because that's what they're grown in. So check out our community outlets, folks. That's Steve from Bourleen. We've got Mary Anthe from Dandenong Outlet. That's in Heatherton Road. Sarah's in Seville. Kat is in Berwick. Uh, Phil and Dom are in Davron Park, Elizabeth, South Australia. We've got Jill and John in Red Hill. I'm going to try and test my memory. Mona and um, uh, Raj, Raj. <laughs> uh, at Taylor's Hills. Who have I missed? Oh, Kilo. Uh, what's his name? Tino. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm mucking around. He's about 35 years my old mate. So Tino's also fountains galore. He's got a great collection of pots and fountains, and he's got our full range there as well. And if I have missed one of you, no, I haven't. It's um, oh, Lethbridge, Monique. All of you who call, you know Monique. Uh, she loves taking your calls. Um, and if you're asking gardening questions and she hasn't got back to you, it's because I haven't answered the emails yet. Because I'm too busy driving a truck or running around and meeting and greeting people, and that's what I love doing. But look, I'll get to your emails as well. Check your soil temperature, go to our website for some great products. We've got our specials running through. As you know, we want to keep our prices down, but we need your support. So if you're not supporting us, prices go up. And once they go up, it's going to be hard to bring them back down again because we'll like that sweet spot. Don't want us to get comfortable there. So enjoy the great products and say hello to our outlets anywhere you are or say hello to us when you see us next time on social media. <laughs> From Eva Silly, Maresi.